first of all, I want to say without question, Trump is going to win the election. And he is going to win. Donald Trump will have two terms. The Associated Press said that Joe Biden is president. Ha! <laughs> Joe Biden didn't win. Nothing will stop me from my plan at putting my son, Donald Trump, back in that White House. Oh, I just know he's going to get in for a second term. I believe this 1,000%. This video will have three parts. In this first part, the prophets predict a Trump win prior to the election. In the second part, they predict that Trump will still win even after the election. And in the third part, they keep believing, even though the Electoral College results are final, which was on January 7th. Here we go. According to what I believe the Lord told me, the president is going to be reelected. I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying by all means, get out and vote. I think it's time to pray. But ladies and gentlemen, that's the word. You ask what's going to happen next. That's what's going to happen next. And watch the reelection of Donald Trump. But the Lord told me to watch the L.A. Dodgers, to watch Amy Coney Barrett, and watch the reelection of Donald Trump. So I'm doing great. So here's the first question Do you really believe President Trump is going to be reelected? If you're caught up, if you are caught up to the throne of God and he face to face tells you, he is winning. There's no doubt whatsoever. He will win because that's God's plan. This isn't just man's plan. This is God's plan for this time in the earth. And he is going to have his way. There's no doubt whatsoever. He will win because that's God's plan. At 430, the Lord said to me, I am going to give your president a second win. <laughs> And the Lord said, he is ready for the next four years, and I'm giving him a second win. Do you understand that? What I intend to do through him, it will take two terms to do. This is what he said. The army of God will have victory after victory after victory. And I love what President Trump always says. He says, you're going to get sick and tired of winning if there is such a thing. And that's going to be the same way for the army of God. It's going to be victory after victory after victory. Will it be an eight-year presidency? Absolutely. Absolutely, we will. Uh, you're sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure about that. In a prayer meeting with our church last week, I saw in a vision Joe Biden melting away like a digital image disintegrating as the pixels fell apart. I saw him fading into obscurity. And the Lord followed with a passage of Scripture, Psalm 47, starting at verse 1. Oh, clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with the voice of joy, for the Lord Most High is to be feared a great king over all the earth. He subdues people under us. He subdues peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the glory of Jacob whom he loves. I've seen and I've sensed that with nothing to lose politically in a second term, the president will intensify his draining of the swamp. So I was initially reluctant to um, to release this prophetic word because I, I don't, I, I'm not comfortable with um, being seen as some sort of political pundit or political prophet. I'm just um, my whole focus is the is the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God is expanded across the face of the earth. But I'll just um, I'll share with you what I felt um, the Lord say to me this morning and. Um, and you know the, the the scripture says, let the you know let the prophets prophesy and let the others judge. So um, I know some people will judge this word harshly; others will receive it. Um, the end result is is not up to me whether you receive it or not. It's my responsibility to share what I believe the Lord has shown me. So um, I felt the Lord say this: that there is a blue wave threatening to engulf the United States of America. Now that blue wave obviously is, represents the, uh, the the Democrat side of politics. But I heard the Lord say, for the sake of my remnant and for the sake of the gospel, I am releasing a red wave. That red wave is the blood of my son, Jesus. Donald Trump will win a second term and will enact laws that will protect the clear clarion call of the gospel going out as never before. Now, most of my prophetic friends, uh, every one of them has said to me that uh, even though he's not your consummate politician, 
President Trump. He's God's choice. Do you feel that same way? Yes, I believe that without a doubt. I believe that the Lord had ordained this long ago, Sid. And what's going to happen this election, Donald Trump, I know, I, I know, is going to win Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, uh, all everywhere. Um, you know, Ohio, Florida, even Nevada. I mean, these these polls are false. And everyone, everywhere you go I, on the ground, people, you don't see Biden signs out there. You see, I'll just take the black demographics, the African American. Their vote was like six to eight percent, I think, in sixteen. He's going to get 20 to 25 percent of that vote. He's done more for African-Americans than anybody in history. So these are the things I'm seeing. It's going to be the greatest um, red wave you ever seen. Boy, that's exciting. Hello, Sid Roth here. I'm here with my friend, Dr. Francis Miles. Uh, Francis, you said something to me on the phone last night that got me so excited because I've heard this phrase before. I've heard about the November surprise, but God told you there'd be two November surprises and not only two November surprises. He told you uh, that uh, who was going to (laughs) win the presidential election. So God said to me, on in November, there is going to be an overwhelming number of white liberals who talk like they hate the president publicly, but in the secrecy of the ballot box, God says, I'm going to work a miracle. I'm going to cause the eunuchs to throw Jezebel off the, uh, 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 to throw off the spirit of Jezebel, and they are going to vote massively for the president this coming November. The second November surprise is the overwhelming number of African-Americans who are going to vote for President Trump. Well, it is the way I feel. What you just said God is going to do in November, it's impossible in the natural. White liberals <laughs> secretly <laughs> voting right. for Trump, blacks secretly <laughs> voting for Trump. Talk about Donald Trump and blood moons. Well, I write about this in the book, God, Trump. And if this doesn't set you on fire, your wood is completely (laughs) wet. You know, people make fun of prophecies and prophecies are wrong. Remember 88 reasons why Jesus was going to come in 1988? You know, I mean, you can go on YouTube and see them. I've watched them several times. He's prophesying and he's talking about how God is, uh, uh, Trump is going to be a trumpet and that God is going to raise up a disruptor. Mm And he says he's going to be in office for two terms. And he says he's going to be in office for two terms. The rebirth of this nation. I pray oh. your prophecy comes true. That's what we it's need. It's coming to pass. But also, you know, there was this fireman named Mark Taylor. Yes, sir. That was pretty extraordinary. Well, Mark, um, let's jump right in. I, I think the biggest question, we are recording this on Wednesday, October 21st, the election is less than two weeks away. We are 13 days away from the election. The biggest question on everybody's mind is whether Trump is going to win a second term. Is the Senate going to stay red? Is the House going to turn red? Right. Mark, you were adamant. I mean, in 2016, you had heard from God that Trump was going to win. You were out with it way in advance. Tell us how you're feeling about this. Have you heard uh, any special words on this? And how do you see it playing out in two weeks? You know, how it exactly plays out, that part I don't know. I just know he's going to get in for a second term, beyond the shadow of a doubt. There's just there's, there's no stopping the strain right now at this point. I mean, we're seeing what's happening with Biden right now. Uh, there's a lot. I mean, Giuliani was dropping Moabs this morning. Uh, you got Steve Bannon coming out doing the same thing. Uh, it's They're going to be lucky if this guy even shows up to the debates, uh, you know, Thursday night. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. You know what I mean? Um, does he stay in the race or does he bow out? Do they indict him before the race, uh, before November 3rd? I have no clue. Uh, all I know is, is, is the election is pretty much over with in the spirit. The way that God showed him, uh, Chuck Pierce, who's a respected prophet right here in Texas, mm-hmm. his, his was a little bit more symbolic that God was going to play the trump card. And later he began to, but before the election, he was very clear. The Lord has said, he will win. You cannot ignore the signs and the wonders that match the Word of God first and then match the prophetic utterances of proven 
prophets, the least of which, not the least of which, is Paula White Kane. That woman has spiritual insight. For angels have even been dispatched from Africa right now. Africa right now. Africa right now. From Africa right now. They're coming here. They're coming here. In the name of Jesus from South America. They're coming here. They're coming here. They're coming here. They're coming here. From Africa. From South America. Angelic forces. Angelic reinforcement. Angelic. And I'm telling you. She is a bulldog because <laughs> once she hears from God, she just doesn't let up. Strike and 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 strike until you have victory for every enemy that is aligned against you. Let there be that we would strike the ground for you will give us victory. And she's had her share of problems too. Oh, yeah. And it was like refining fire. Man, the devil attacked her in every way you could think of physically and in ways that that I just I, I'm just at, in, in awe of her. I hear the sound of victory. 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 Stephen Strang, I heard this and we are right in the middle of it right now. He said all of this trouble or birth pang to the rebirth of this nation. I believe it. And he said, you, you don't have any idea what it's going to look like a hundred years from now, but I do. And he said, it will be as much better as it was better for them. The rebirth of this nation. I pray oh. your prophecy comes true. That's what we it's need. It's coming to pass. Now, dream three, this gets a little crazy. He came to you again. What, what did he ask you this well, time? Well, the third time was after the inauguration. So he's just starting his, his this yeah. term, the first term. And he comes to me, and, and I got to say, this is one of the most uh, powerful of the three dreams. He, it was very short, and he said, I want to ask you to be my running mate. That was the phrase, running mate, for the coming election, 2020. Four years year, away. Four years away. Yeah. And that was all there was to the dream. And I woke up, and I thought, why am I being asked, <laughs> number one, to be his running mate, mm -hmm. number two, concerning an election that's, that's uh, you know, four years down the road? And the, and the Lord spoke to me and he said, what I intend to do through him, it will take two terms to do. This is what he said. And he said, and I need for you to run with him in the spirit to move everything out of the way that would hinder his reelection and even to establish some things that would work in his behalf. But I need someone to run with him in the spirit to see that accomplished. Who is going to win? Uh, has God shown you, Rob? Well, you know, um, I went into, I was in a meeting down in Florida and, uh, I, the, I was listening to the Lord before this meeting and uh, this wasn't even on my mind, but this is the way it happens at times. And I turned around and the news was on and I saw Joe Biden on the screen. And, uh, you remember this, I told you this, I said, uh, I looked around and just out of conversation, I said, Lord. Joe Biden don't need to be president. And just like this, just like if you'd answered me, he said, he won't just like that. <laughs> he said, he won't. And then he said this, he said, and after the election, now this is going to sound strange, but he said, the democratic party will go underground. And I don't think that I, I don't know exactly what that means, but he said that they would go underground like the throne of Pergamon, the throne of Satan that disappeared and showed back up in Berlin. And he said, they'll go underground and then reemerge at a later time under another thing and um, another banner maybe. Well, I, I uh, understand that because of other prophets and I kind of piece things together. Other prophets have said that the Democratic Party will just kind of like disappear. But what mm -hmm. you're adding to that is they're not going to disappear. They're right. going to do their strategizing 
That's as, right. As if they're, they've disappeared. That's exactly and right. And the Lord again spoke to me and said, this will not be fully settled until January the 18th. We, it will be swampy. It will be nasty. And we must stand praying until then. So, I have said what God has said to me. I have not held back. I hope you, some way, in the middle of the fertilizing, have not had too much slung on you. But if you did, that was necessary. Because this year has been a very difficult year of being dug around and fertilized. But let's decree right now, we're on the verge of growing in a new way. Father, we say right now, we ask for your fruit that will come from what you have done these last four years in Yeshua's name. Here are the prophets speaking just after the election. I knew that we were going to be victorious, and I knew that Trump was going to be president, and he is going to win. And now is the time not to waver, but to stand on the word of God. And God very clearly has spoken that Trump is going to be president. So we want to get behind what God is saying, and we want to stand on that truth. And I'm saying to everyone that's viewing us right now, it's not over until God has the last word, until God sings. Uh, so, so Mario, uh, there's a scripture I want you to comment on. Yes, sir. Uh, it's found in Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord God does nothing, nothing, without revealing his purpose to his servants, the prophets. And I have been interviewing prophet after prophet that I trust that has been saying without blinking an eye, Donald Trump will have two terms. President Trump is going to win. And you know what? <laughs> the way God built me, when I hear a word from God, you can't get me off of that. That's right. Now, if I hear a word from myself, then I'll, I'll, I'll be double-minded. But if I hear a word from God, there's nothing you can do to talk me out of it. I don't relate to Christians that can't just go on God's word. I mean, it doesn't just say in the Bible, um, uh, when I come back to earth, will I find faith there? All I'm saying is, no matter the outcome or the, the no matter the the amount of time for God to move his hand the outcome does not change God said again in our church service on Sunday he said if I delivered Daniel if I delivered Shadrach Meshach and Abednego if I delivered a nation Israel that was standing upon the shores of the Red Sea think about it they just went through a plague we just went through a plague they were shut in we had a shut in they were shut in on the shores they had a, a, a very arrogant enemy saying that they now had Israel in their grip that's what Biden and the left is saying oh we've got this nation we've got the presidency it looked hopeless in fact fear gripped the nation some of you that are watching you're afraid and I understand, but here's the thing, you've got to loose that from your soul. Because Moses cried out to God in that moment in the book of Exodus, and God said, excuse me, why are you crying out or why are you shrieking out to me? Lift up your rod of authority and go forward. I haven't changed my mind. We have to do the same. We have to watch what we're speaking out of our mouth. We gotta watch what we're typing on the keyboard and posting on social media. We gotta watch who we're calling and what we're discussing. Are we coming into agreement with the spirit of lies? Are we coming into agreement with, with Jezebel's prophets? Or are we gonna to listen to God and agree with him that no matter how long it takes, the outcome will be God's man will stand in the land again. There's never been a season in my life when I have been more convinced that I'm hearing from the Lord, others are hearing from the Lord. 
that we have tapped into God's will, a prophetic vein, and where a remnant of the church has responded to him in prayer and obedience. And I believe uh, that God has orchestrated all of this. He has heard us and he is going to give us victory. I want to say to you again, this is not over. This election is not over. That's the purpose of this um, a podcast. And, and so we, we can't give up. I want to say right up front that I believe uh, there has been rampant fraud and deceit uh, in this election. Uh, I have hear, heard many reports, as you probably have, about the orchestration of those things. I believe the enemy is trying to steal this election from Donald Trump because I believe we need him in office to continue doing what he's been doing, uh, which is a part of positioning America for God's purpose in the future. This is about more than just we Americans being free, prosperous, strong, uh, what is happening right now in the restoration of America and the reset of America is about something much more than our comfort and blessing. This is about the greatest revival that has ever come to the planet that is beginning. And God needs America positioned properly to play a role in that. We will play the most significant role in that. Not that it's about us, but we are to serve him in that way. So we're going to have to experience this revival and we're going to have to be a part of trumpeting the message of the gospel of the kingdom through this revival. God needs us uh, and he needs the church to be strong. And, and, and Donald Trump is a part of this. This is a, not about Donald Trump in one sense. And yet it is in another sense because he needs to be in this position for four more years so that the Antichrist forces in America, those that don't want a Christian America, that those that don't want us to return to our roots, they don't like it. They don't want God's control rule. They don't want any part of any of that. The left, uh, they must not gain power. And so uh, that's, that's why I believe this is so significant. And that's why I believe they were willing to stoop to fraud to win this election. Will President Trump, from what God is showing you, win his second term? Uh, yes, it is, is for sure, uh, Sid, that God wants uh, President Trump. Tracy, is President Trump going to have a second term? Well, it's the same thing, similar to Kevin, yes. By the rumbling and the onslaught of the enemy, Greater acceleration and increase of the tidal wave of my justice is being released into the United States. My people, lift up your voice and continue to intercede and decree that which I have spoken for the greatest days of my justice prevailing, the greatest days of my justice prevailing and the revealing of my majesty and that I am the one who sits in the heavens and laughs have only just begun. Keep standing and decreeing what he has spoken. The power of the prophetic voice of God is about to be seen. Listen, I believe this 1,000%. I knew the day was coming. I've known it for 20 years. When the revelation that we are the ecclesia, that we not only pray and ask and offer up petitions to him, but from our position seated there with him, we also move in his kingly authority. And we not only petition we decree and declare downward in a sense from our position with him there in heaven. And that when the church and that kingly position is the ecclesia, I knew that when the church moved fully into this revelation, there would be the greatest shift on the planet that we've ever seen. We are in the beginnings of that now. And if we continue to release the word of the Lord, if we, if we continue to hold fast to what he's saying, Take prophecies like that. Take scriptures he gives us. Take the promises that he said about turning this nation and the third great awakening and the cleaning up of the nation and that the, the prophetic word of the Lord is that Donald Trump uh, will be there for eight years. We just got, we just have to keep decreeing his word. Yes, we ask him for mercy. Yes, we ask for his grace and we petition him to work. 
but we also decree his will and word into the earth. And as we do that, we're going to see this great miracle she prophesied. We're going to see one of the greatest shifts in the history of this nation. We're going to see justice prevail like never before. And and, and, and I believe this 1,000%. I spoke with my friend Chuck Pierce, and I know, by the way, he, he is releasing a an email to today. This was this is November 5th. He's releasing one later today. He said, uh, recounting in, in detail and explaining more what I'm about to say to you. But Chuck gave a prophetic word a couple of years ago in our one of our Appeal to Heaven conferences, and he gave a time frame that the, that the war and the turmoil would continue through. And it was it was like two two and a half years. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it wasn't it wasn't just in a few days or weeks. And then, as and I had forgotten about that, but in our recent reset gathering, uh, he he brought it up again, and he said we're at the point in time now where that that time frame that he gave back then in prophesying it uh, would be January 18th. He said the turmoil will continue on through January 18th before uh, breakthrough really fully comes and we see things turn, begin to turn the way we want to see them. Uh, I am not going to be surprised if this drags out for weeks and a couple of months. I believe the legal battles will go on and on. Uh, I believe that, that it, it we're going to have to persevere. I believe the ecclesia is being tested. I believe our perseverance is being tested. We're going to have to decide uh, we are in a war. We are a soldier. And as Paul told Timothy, we're going to have to war, good warfare. We're going to have to do it through the prophetic word spoken over us. That's what he said to Timothy. We're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. We're going to persevere even when we're tired. We're going to have to get on the prayer calls. We're going to, have to pray with our friends. We're going to have to get things like this, give him 15 app and pray it every day. We're going to have to say it out loud every day. We're going to, have to make our stand and say, you are not taking back the ground. Satan, you are not taking back the ground that we have gained. You are not having this nation. You're not going to turn it into an unchristian, immoral nation as you thought you were succeeding in doing it. Supporting uh, maybe Ted Cruz, but then God told me that Trump was going to win. And many people back then mocked me and they laughed at me and I got called coon and all kinds of stuff. And um, the Lord began to show me why. Trump was going to win. He told me that it was a sign for America to repent. He said there was going to be a lot of things that were going to be shaken up uh, and a lot of things that were going to be exposed and a reveal, uh, revealed and that this was going to lead the way to one of the greatest revivals ever. The Associated Press said that Joe Biden is president. Ha! <laughs> Yeah. Here's what's going to happen. They're promoting this Biden presidency nonsense, this lie from the pit of hell, because they want to build it and build it and build it and build it. So when the Supreme Court sides with conservatives, and they're going to, because we won, 110% we won. When they side with us, they're going to say, oh my goodness, he's overturned the election, and they're going to burn everything down. I'm telling you, there's going to be looting and riot. We haven't seen riots yet. BLM, Antifa, and their basement-dwelling buddies are going to come out in full force. But I'm telling you right now, they, ladies and gentlemen, have underestimated the theology of redneckism in the United States of America. We've had a gut full of it. I'm telling you, Donald Trump, with 100% accuracy... In my opinion, ladies and gentlemen, lest I get shadow banned or my page is completely taken away, has won single-handedly the presidency of the United States of America in the biggest landslide victory in the history of this nation. I'm telling you, I'm not worried. I'm not fretting. I don't have basketball-sized ulcers. I'm not going to lose one second sleep over any of it. Joe Biden didn't win. He's not the president. He will never be the president. And come January the 20th, I'm telling you, I'll be wing, bing, 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 winner, winner, chicken dinner, referring back to this video. I can unashamedly and unapologetically tell you right here, sitting in this rental car, Joe Biden lost. I would say to leaders, I'll listen in with it, to the leaders that are hedging your bets. Well, you know, I believe there, there's probably been a little fraud and, you know, I'm, you know, maybe, maybe God's going to work in this, but if he doesn't, you know, we're, then we we'll just get behind Biden and pray for him. Listen, make a stand. Okay. Ha ha on that devil. Ha ha ha. Make a stand.
If you believe there's been fraud, stand up and say, there's been fraud. We go no farther. That's the way we're going to pray. We go no farther until every vote, legal vote is counted and false ones are thrown out. And quit hedging it with, but, 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 just, just say what, what the truth is and motivate your people to pray. Don't give them a little out. Well, you know, uh, but, you know, whatever God does. What kind of stand is that? <laughs> That's no kind of stand. There wouldn't even be in America if two, 250 years ago, righteous preachers had not made a righteous stand and say, we're going to fight for freedom. So, you know, I have just zero tolerance and respect for this mamby pamby, uh, you, you know, oh, we, we, you know, I think this, but what are, you know, what are, no, not whatever. Get get before God long enough till you believe Till you know what you really believe and then tell us what you really believe. What is God really saying? Was there fraud? If so, are we going to fight or not? Is Trump God's choice or not? It's time to make a stand. There's too much at stake here. I'm not willing to walk into heaven through the blood of 60, wading through the blood of 60 million more aborted babies. I'm just not willing to do that. And God, God, God is just not going to tolerate it. So make a stand. Ha ha ha. Tell us what you really believe. Get on one side or the other. Definitely. So everybody knows what you believe and do it. And if you don't have backbone enough to do that, then go get a job doing something other than preaching the gospel or being a voice for God in the earth. I'm sorry, but that's just what I believe. Are, are you saying that all of this is culminating in, and I want, I'm, I'm, I'm going to press you on this, Chris, in Donald Trump getting his second uh, uh, term of presidency. It has to, yes. That's what I hear. Yes. As someone who is in touch with all the prophets in America who have prophesied that Donald Trump would win a second term, they're not giving an inch. They're not willing to budge. They're not willing to repent. All of us are unanimous believing the word that God spoke to us that Trump indeed would win a re-election. And that what's happening right now is the false prophets of the media are literally cutting themselves. They're dancing in the street and they're shouting Meanwhile, there are much larger issues on our hands than just a presidency. I've told people this, listen, if he doesn't end up getting reelected, I will openly repent to the body of Christ. I don't believe just because you miss a prophecy makes you a false prophet. So what would you say, Sid, now that we're on the other side of the election, things didn't quite turn out the way um, many people anticipated Things didn't quite turn out the way many people anticipated. No, the way things turned out was 100% opposite of what was predicted. Trump lost and Joe Biden won. What does that mean for the prophets and the prophetic? Were those words fake or what's your take on that? Well, first of all, there's an old saying that I remember even before I was a believer. It's not over till the fat lady sings. And uh, it, it pertained to uh, 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 opera in one case, a, a basketball game in another. It's just, first of all, it's not over. In my opinion, uh, uh, and this is just my opinion, uh, I believe that President Trump won, W-O-N, and will win, even though it was taken away from him. Uh, that's my opinion. However, I also believe it'll probably go to the Supreme Court. So uh, you have to understand how faith operates. I believe the word of God. I believe the prophets. Now, having said that, I'm going to do the, I'm, I'm going to take the other side of the coin. If they are all wrong, it doesn't destroy my faith in God. It destroys my faith in the accuracy of the prophets. 
But I, I still have faith in the prophets because my faith is in the Word of God. Sid Roth, like a lot of these guys, makes no meaningful distinction between the Word of God, the final unchanging Word of God, otherwise known as the Holy Bible, and this new quasi-Word of God, which is the Word of the Prophets, which is constantly changing and is never completely true. And in the case of this Trump prophecy, it's completely untrue. Uh, I, I absolutely believe Trump is going to win. I haven't given up one iota. Uh, understanding the communication from God, especially in dreams, uh, it takes a seasoned prophet to really understand it. And uh, I know a few that are absolutely accurate. I, I would be shocked if they ever made a mistake. And, and all of them are saying President Trump has won. So and now we know that all of them are wrong. They are all false prophets. Period. So woe is me if I take an, another position than what God is speaking through the prophets. I don't know anything about American politics, but I know one thing. What is written in the scroll in heaven about the destiny of the U.S.? And in that destiny, God's will is Mr. Trump should, be, should serve another term. Between November 3 and January 20, anything can happen to overturn, right? Right? Am I right? Anything can happen to overturn. So you want to, don't stop praying till November 3. You want to continue till Mr. Trump is safely installed, inaugurated on January 20th. Amen. Amen. Ha, ha, ha. There is another work that God wants to do in this great nation, and that can only be done through a man with a personality like Mr. Trump. You know, a person with that kind of personality, I don't think you would have ever seen in the history of your 45 presidents a man like him who is willing to take on anybody, <laughs> even the mighty United Nations, right? Have you seen any other presidents of even China could not do that? Hey everyone, this is Albert. Mark your calendar for December 12th, 2020. Something remarkable is going to happen. God is going to bring a thick red on circling the December 12th. A red wave is going to come because God wants to bring an amazing victory for President Donald J. Trump. I saw the name Trump just written like, just like this, if you can see my hand, just Trump. Well, Ooh. coming up out of it was like a road of, of water. It looked like a waterfall going uphill, just like that. Just a road of water. But the water was made out of numbers. It was numbers, and they were changing just rapidly as it went up. Then underneath that name, I saw the name Biden. And I saw the same type thing, but it was only about this long. It, was, it wasn't even half the size of the other. And it was flowing down and out of numbers, and they were changing. It was flowing down. And so I guess they were changing because the water was coming down. And Trump's fall was way ahead. Wow. And I heard the Lord say this. I, he said, and this is on video, said, you don't think I can change everything by Christmas, do you? He said, oh, yes, I can. <laughs> and he said, I am going to give you a December surprise, I think is what he said, something to that effect. You can watch the video. Yeah. I'm going to give you a surprise and we will laugh together. Ha, 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 ha. The updates to their cell phones and their smartphones and they're going, oh, they found this and they found that and they got this and Hunter Biden this and, and you know, and all this stuff. And, and it seems so obvious, yet it seems like we're not seeing the results that we want to see. So, Pastor Bill, what do we do in this situation? Well, I, I think we just hold course. We, we stick with what the Lord has said. It's, uh, it's not 
It's not complicated. The word of the Lord is not complicated. The process may be. Uh, there's ups and downs. But uh, I, what we have to do is we have to actually make decrees. We have to declare what the Lord is saying and what the Lord has said. Here are the prophets speaking after the riots in Washington, after the Senate gained a Democrat majority, and after the Electoral College confirmed the presidency of Joe Biden. Well, I say no, and the liars and the stealers and the takers will pay greatly. Nothing will stop me from my plan at putting my son, Donald Trump, back in that White House. The Democrats now have control of the White House and Congress. Tonight, President Trump's role when the violent protest is siphoning support from his closest advisors. At least eight administration officials have resigned, including one cabinet member. Can you not stand? And it's two months after the election, but that was Donald Trump finally, for the first time, conceding. Uh, he said he's going to play and have an orderly transition. So you're going to have a seamless, he said, transition. He acknowledges, you said, that there's going to be a new administration on January 20th. I came here to make a quick little video. It's about a word that God gave me. Yes, from the Lord, he gave me a word that Donald Trump will be the president. I'm going to be honest about it. I don't know how, I don't know when, but he will be president for 2021. I had prayed for confirmation for the past few weeks. God had been confirming it to me through multiple resources and prayer through other people. I mean, it's been so supernatural, it's not even funny. I am not a political man. I have never voted for a president. But what I came here to tell you is that God, the Lord Jesus Christ, gave me a word today in my prayer closet, a final word. He gave me confirmation. He told me, I asked him, God, give me a word for Donald Trump. He told me Naftalia, and I looked it up because I had no idea what it was. And Naftalia is actually a tribe. It's one of the tribes from the Israelites. And, I, and I'm just, I'm on Google right now. It says, the people of Naftalia were especially noted for their swiftness in battle, leading impromptu charges against the enemy. Thus, we get the image of a deer being released and charging off swift and powerful. Jacob's blessing was fulfilled and the deer became the symbol of the tribe of Naftalia. For those that don't know, impromptu, what that means is when you do something planned organized or rehearsed, right? So we see, even with the speech on CNN with Donald Trump, when he, um, when he came and he said, you know, Biden would be president and he would transfer the powers. If you dissect that speech, you see that he's not giving up. So I do believe that Donald Trump will be president for 2021. I made a post that Donald Trump will be president. There will be a second round of the coronavirus. The wicked would be exposed. Many would come to repentance. But what I'm saying is, that it's happening. I mean, there's a second round of the coronavirus in China. We all know the wickedness is about to be exposed. There's so much wickedness around us in the world. There's an antichrist agenda. We were at the White House this past week. We saw a lot. I'm not here to say Donald Trump supporters are this, Donald Trump supporters are that, but I will tell you, I saw a lot of corruption and the supporters were peaceful. We did come across the Antifa. We came across organized party and U-Haul trucks that were literally, their goal was to storm the White House. And the Lord brought us there to let us see everything that's going on. So all I'm saying is, and this is again, a quick video just to let y'all know, and I'm standing firm on this. The Lord gave me a word that Donald Trump will be president. We have got to stop. We've got to let things play out. And we've got to also believe that what has been spoken and what has been released is something that God is going to fulfill. There's still the, the possibility, even with all the extreme things, with all the extreme things that, that have been said and that have been done, there's still something that God can do that can work in, in, in a miracle. And, you know, who I think it was John Quincy Adams that came back and served a second term later. And right. so people that, you know, and, and one of these, you know, these guys, many of these guys that were apologizing, many of them are my friends, actually. One of them called me on Sunday morning and and we had a great talk. And he said, you know, I haven't haven't heard your perspective. I haven't heard that. That was a one minute video. I wasn't able to say too much on that. We just, I just threw on Instagram real quick, but we've got to stop with this backing up. And somehow we have moved into as the church of Jesus Christ, people pleasing. So if you live in reality, the place where Trump is no longer the president, you are guilty of being a people pleaser. Yeah. And this is not the church of the people. That's right. This is not the church of the United States. This is the church of Jesus Christ. That's what God meant. He meant that Trump will, will serve two terms, one then and one in 2024. That is what happened. And there's those, those emails are still passing around saying that's probably what God meant. No, that is not what God said, period. He never said that. He said... He would run two consecutive terms. 
he would be in office when he first announced before he actually won the first time he will be in office for eight years then announce the next eight years and we can, we can go into that a little bit if you want to okay nobody in that side is going to the dark side either i'll just say he said eight years for trump eight years for pence and eight years for whoever he picks for vice president there i've said it he never changed it and just because in your head what you see or hear whatever news i hope you're not listening to the fake news uh there i said that too uh you <laughs> need to know who you're listening to after 400 years of bondage to interject himself into a nation of people who had been under harsh taskmasters for 400 years what am i saying we may have, and there are those that may have been giving up on God. They're seeing that it doesn't appear that anything is changing. It doesn't look like there's anything that has changed. And so they're giving up. And they're all looking at somehow that the 20th next week is the deciding factor whether the prophets are true, whether they're false, whether this nation is going forward or not. This is called moving the goalposts. January 20th is Inauguration Day, and the president begins his term on this day. The Electoral College has already declared Joe Biden the winner of the presidential election on January 7th anyway. This is like reading the score after a football game has ended and saying, just because one team has more points than the other doesn't mean they won the game. And God is saying, I'm not looking at any of this. I've said what I've said. I'm remembering my covenant. Right. The people <clears throat> may not be remembering the covenant. Amen. The people may be uh, cowering or, or, or quitting or flip-flopping, but God has an intent. And it's this, he's not taking his hand off of the United States of America. He's not changing his plan. At this point, nobody should take this man seriously when he pretends to speak on behalf of God and tries to explain what God's plans might be. Now, here's something that's interesting that, that I want to share real quick, and that is this. And, you know, oftentimes, and I wrote this down, that, you know, some are feeling like their hope is being doused with next week's events. Did you ever think about 1 Kings chapter 18? When here this prophet stands up, the prophet Elijah, and he, he begins to declare a prophecy, the God who answers by fire is the true God. And so he builds this altar, and guess what he does? He's instructed to pour water or douse <laughs> the very prophetic word. It almost looks yeah. impossible. How in the world is God going to act now that we just poured water on a prophecy that we just declared that he would answer by fire? Right. To some, January 20 is their dousing. If, if, if it goes the other way, they think that every prophet is wrong. And every prophet who said Biden would lose and Trump would have a second term is wrong. There is no other way to look at this. Ha, 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 ha. And there is no way this nation's ever going to go forward. There's, 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 there's no way that Donald Trump will ever be part of the future plan of how God is going to raise up this nation in greatness. But I want to say this. Right now, it looks like our hopes are being doused. Yeah. Next week, it looks like our hopes are being doused. But that's when the fire falls and things begin to shift and change. There comes a moment when you prayed through, you've fasted, you've done what you have to do. And then the outcome is in God's hands. And you have to really look with trust and say, what God's doing now, I may not understand, but I'm convinced that God is doing something that is going to become clear to me once he makes his acts known. Yeah. I mean, now I want to go on record right here uh, because I know a lot of people have texted and I know, Pastor Hank, you've gotten this too. Well, are, are you guys... Are you guys moving off of what you stood for? Are you saying that uh, this was wrong? And are you going to apologize? And uh, I'm not backing off one bit. I'm not. I'm staying right here. Pastor Hank, are you backing off? No, in fact, uh, I'm not. And something that Lance just said, <clears throat> you know, regarding the misery, we cannot forget the pattern of how God operates. There was so much misery and bondage and crying out from a communist uh, government, the Egyptians. I'll bet you didn't know that the Egyptians were actually communists. Communist uh, government, the Egyptians under Pharaoh against the nation of Israel. And Exodus chapter 2 says, in fact, um, uh, the, the actual reference, I believe, is uh, verse 27, said that, that God heard 
their cry, and he remembered his covenant. And I say that because God has remembered his covenant with America. And he's going to remember his covenant with America. And there is going to come an intervention of God regarding the, the fraudulent election, regarding the things that we've seen. So, no, I, I'm not conceding. But I did write something down, Pastor Gene, that I want to just make a couple references uh, about that I think are important so that people understand why I am committing over the next uh, few nights, weeks, to continue to stand and, and put my face out there. First of all, God has not spoken to me to repent to concede. And I'm asking that people afford me and others, other prophets, other believers, other pastors, intercessors that are standing right now to hear God's voice regarding it. And some of the demands for repentance that has happened, I think we're going to find has been a little bit premature because we're basing everything on an inauguration date. Now, inauguration date may in fact be important and, and it's been consistent throughout history, but this has been unlike anything that we've seen. We're talking about foreign interference that can be proven, that I believe will be proven. We're also talking about a fraudulent election, so it makes the whole inauguration thing not be consistent. This man is grasping at straws. He doesn't make any sense. But he does sound confident, he does sound authoritative, and that's all that matters. So therefore, if some are feeling like they need to repent, feel free to do so. And I want to go on record. This prophetic vessel is not afraid to repent if they needed to or to make, admit if they made a mistake. I have gone on record before when I've had to, you know, make things right that, of something that I've said. So this is not a pride kick here. It's just I feel like we're putting so much emphasis on an inauguration date that the election has still some things that must be looked into that will be looked into. And you can't tell me over a hundred or thousands of prophetic voices, intercessors, believers all missed it. This is really the bottom line here. All these prophetic people missed it. They did. They were wrong. But instead of admitting that, he's trying to rearrange reality to try to invent a scenario where Trump still somehow will get that second term, even though it's over. In other words, I believe God is saying we need to wait and stand and take a position like David. Is there not a cause? And here's what I would say. Come back and talk to me in four years. I can just about guarantee you that this whole topic will be erased, not in four years, but in probably four weeks or four months. So he's really not wanting you to bring this up again somewhere down the road. You say, that's ridiculous. Well, four years. You, you said President Trump would be reelected. He was. But come back and talk to me in four years. In other words, they thought Noah was a fool. You see, Hank, we believe as Christians, Bible-believing Christians, that Noah actually heard from God, unlike you and all of your prophet friends. Noah prophesied something that had never been done in the history of the earth. He said it would rain, and the scoffers, the whole world was against him. You talk about a guy who the whole world was against. It was Noah. They scoffed him, they rejected him, they mocked him. But in the end, they had prophetic blindness yeah. until God moved. And that's what's going to happen. Yeah, amen. God's going to move. I agree. And you know, the great thing about faith is, uh, and those of us here in this network have been with Brother Copeland all these years. You know, the great thing about faith is I don't have to understand how it's going to happen. <laughs> and I know... We, up till this point, we've thought about this and the Electoral College. And then we thought, well, January 6th, maybe Ted Cruz's and then no Sidney Powell and everybody's going to get this thing done. And, you know, we're at this point where we have no answers in the natural how this thing is going to be resolved. Actually, there isn't anything that needs to be resolved. There was an election. One guy won and the other guy lost. It's really pretty simple. You are the guys who made it very complicated and have really confused a lot of sincere Bible-believing Christians in that process. However, that does not move us off our faith. You say, well, you guys are just crazy. Okay, we'll take that. Watch and see. Watch and see what happens, Mario Murillo. Are you, are you on this side or where are you coming from? What I'm coming from is a little place of jealousy because you see, God never told me about Trump being reelected, but I believe everyone that God did tell that to, and I respect them. And there's so many voices that I, that I admire for their courage and their stand, and I believe them. And I know God is able in the last hour to do something impossible. 
What could be more impossible, ladies and gentlemen, than the moment when the three Hebrew children were standing in front of the fiery furnace tied up and the king taunts them and says, is there any, is your God able to save you? And they made a decision. They said, you know what? Our God is able to save us, but even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow down and worship the idol. And you know what? God saved them. God saved them in the furnace, didn't save them from the furnace. And it's too early, ladies and gentlemen. You know, th there's too high of a crime that's been committed in our nation. And, and there's been too ugly and vile and evil of a system of censorship. These prophets really need to lean on this story that the election was not fair and that there was a great deal of fraud and that millions and millions of people didn't have their vote counted. But even if all of that is true, it doesn't change the fact that the prophets were wrong. The prophets didn't predict anything correctly. Even the prophets who did claim that there would be corruption and fraud, they still all predicted that Trump was going to win in spite of all of that. And there's no way that you can shake your fist at God, deny millions and millions of Christians and American voters their rights without something giving. So in my bones, I feel and believe and I'm standing that there's going to be an intervention. It's not based on what you see. <laughs> it's based on what you know. But, you know, not everybody thinks this way. In fact, some think we're a little bit cultish. Watch this clip. You'll see what I mean. Before we get to how that's going to happen, I just want to show a little bit more of what happened inside the U.S. Capitol, just so that we understand. Some of the people, Mr. Hassan, that you see here were once elementary school counselors. Some of these people were firemen. One of them was an Olympic swimmer. How is it that they lose control of their own sort of judgment and that a cult leader, or in this case, President Trump, takes over their mindset and allows them to risk their lives for him. So in studying all the thought reform brainwashing models, I've developed a bite model of authoritarian control. And it basically talks about controlling behavior, information, thoughts, and emotions to create a new identity that's dependent and obedient. And um, this is a radical personality change in the uh, mental health literature in the APA DSM-5. It's called a dissociative disorder, questioning of identity. And the, the bottom line is all of America needs deprogramming because we've all been negatively influenced by Donald Trump. That's it, Lance. You need to be deprogrammed. I've been saying all along, this is the guy. Lance needs to be deprogrammed. Now, I don't agree that the entire country needs to be somehow deprogrammed from Trump. But people like these guys, they are not helping at all. But they are getting a lot of views on this YouTube channel. And so they got to keep this story alive. They've got to somehow create this idea that somehow Trump might come back, that God's going to do this miracle, not even at the last second. It's going to be past the last second. It's bizarre, it's useless, and it's dangerous because people need to live in the real world. What I find really ironic is that these men talk about how great America is. This is a free country where we get to elect the president. We get to have the freedom to choose our representatives. And yet... They actually want God to step in and uh, force his way into the equation for the first time in world history and drop the leader into the country that these men say he has anointed, which would be bypassing the American system of free elections. I'll tell you what, nobody has uh, brought to the surface the mental illness in America more quickly than Donald Trump. He reminds me of a deliverance minister I knew. He could walk in a room and every demon would manifest. And Mike, if you got a minute to stay, I want you to be encouraged. So I was uh, 30,000 feet in the air, I guess that's where you are when you're flying. And uh, I felt to come here. This is what the Lord said. I will and I am dealing with the enemies of darkness. They celebrate as though they have won, but they are terrified. They remember being stripped of their agenda, power, and public display was made of them. This will happen again, says the Lord. Are you ready to stand with me when it looks like I have forsaken you, USA? Yet I have set traps that they fear since the Son of God seems so quiet. I've heard the prayers in the days of Daniel, 
when he prayed the first day. Yet it looked as though heaven was silent and darkness would prevail in its resistance. But the angel broke through. This is taking place again. Now God says you'll see after it appears the forces of darkness are prevailing, so it seems, that I will come and I will give your freedoms to you, United States. This is my timing, my event, and there is man's timing. Do not confuse them as if man's timing determines your future. This is the guy who said that he was absolutely certain that God told him that Donald Trump was going to get a second term, which would mean, by definition... A second term starts on January 20th of 2021. That did not happen. Now he's speaking for God again, and this time God is saying, how dare you put me on some kind of a timeline? No, Hank Kuhneman is the guy who put God on a timeline, and now he's claiming that God refuses to be on the timeline. (laughs) I want you to imagine that you're leaving a used car lot because there was a really obnoxious salesman there who was bothering you, and you just don't want to buy anything from him. But he keeps chasing you, walking faster and faster, trying to get your attention, trying to sell you yet again on the stupid car that you don't want to buy. That's kind of what you're seeing here. Their timing is wrong. For I have my day of visitation that will be outpoured upon you. There are those who weep, fear, and say, where is God? You're quiet. Why didn't he do anything? Why has this day happened? Where is the Lord? I am the same God who gave Jairus his daughter back, who was, as I said, not dead but asleep. This I say of you, United States, I'm giving your nation back that was stolen from you. Just ask yourself, does that sound like God himself talking? Or does that sound like Hank? Yeah, it sounds like Hank. I will give it back for you and your children that I may be glorified. God does not require the presidency of Donald Trump in order to be glorified. Therefore, in this season, open up your arms high to me and you will see that I will open my hands and my heart to you and I will give your nation back to you, says the Lord. It is blasphemy to speak on behalf of God when you're actually just speaking on behalf of yourself. And this is the word of the Lord. It's the promise of God. And we must continue to fight and stand. You know, we talked about this at the beginning. It seems like, oh man, you know, Biden's in. It's not what we thought. The prophets were wrong. Everybody just wants to, there's a big contingency that wants to give up and go home and, and throw up. Well, I guess we'll wait. You know, how should we be praying in faith for what's happening? Well, let, let me let me let me back up to the timing issue and lead into it with that because while while Mike was talking and Hank was giving that word, the Lord reminded me of of a word in Acts chapter three. Now this is a this is one of those great miracles. That's what God's about to do, a great miracle. And this is at the gate, beautiful, where Peter and John are going, and and Peter grabs the man who'd been sitting sitting there at lame begging and at thirty some years old. So he's he's been there for decades. Everybody in Israel knows who this guy is because of the prominent place he's sitting and begging, and they probably all flipped him a coin. But Jesus went by this man many, many times and did not do the miracle. And the Lord spoke to me once. He said, I want you to look at that passage. I have some, some things there to show you haven't seen. And I told the Lord, I know everything about that passage. But he said, no, you go back and you look at it again. So... I studied it intently, couldn't find what it was. Finally, des- out of desperation, I looked up the word beautiful. Yeah. And I found that the word does not mean lovely or pretty or beautiful in that sense. It's actually a timing word. The word is horeos, yeah, right. and it means literally the right time. And so it, it's only used to, uh, to translate as beautiful because when circumstances come together at the right time and the right way in God's time, it becomes a beautiful thing. And then the Lord showed me, I'll show you. He said, this is why I didn't heal the man three years ago, two years ago, three, three years ago, a year ago. I was uh, in my sovereignty. I named that gate the right time gate. And I planted that man there in my sovereignty and made sure he sat at the right time gate. And then I saved that miracle for the time when I knew my new church would need it. I didn't heal him. I just waited for the right time. And at the right time, I worked that miracle at the right time gate. And I hear the Lord saying right now, do not give the people of God. You must keep praying. 
You must persevere. This is what we teach. This is what we believe. We believe in miracles. We believe in persevering through right. faith and patience. Yeah. We inherit the promises. When has God ever said, I'll do it at your time, or I'll do it when you want me to do it? Yes, it's true that we should be patient, and we should trust God and not expect Him to do what we want Him to do when it is that we want Him to do it. However, these are the men who said that Trump was going to get a second term. And again, by definition, that means that on January 20th, he would have to start that second term. But he lost. That's why Joe Biden started that second term. So this has nothing to do with God. He's always said, you must believe and persevere. Right. And I'll do these things. And I tell you, and I tell the body of Christ, we are coming to a right time. Mm -hmm. We are coming to a gate in the spirit. That's, right. that's a beautiful gate because it's God's timing. By the way, the beautiful gate that he's referring to in the book of Acts has nothing to do with timing. It was literally a big, beautiful gate. These men twist and distort God's real word, while at the same time, they trust in the thing in their head as if it were the actual word of God. And he's going to do this. He's going to expose it. And the exposure is going to go so deep. Yeah. This nation is going to move into crisis because this corruption is going to be shown it's Congress, it's in the judges, mm -hmm. it's in the deep state, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's in executive branches, and God's just going to lift the lid off and pull the mask back. And he's going to do this because mm -hmm. he needs this nation. No, that's not true, Dutch Sheets. God is self-sustaining. He does not need the United States. He loves this nation. He's going to use this nation. He's not finished this nation. I say to the people of God, do not grow weary mm -hmm. in well-doing. That's a great Bible verse, to not grow weary in doing good is a wonderful Bible verse. However, that has nothing to do with decreeing and declaring and praying over and over again and going to meetings and listening to men like these so that somehow President Trump can get that second term, which has so far eluded him. So that the Egyptians said, now watch this, those who were pursuing, these were communist people. The Egyptians that he's talking about lived about 3,000 years before communism was even invented. By the way, thank you so much if you've listened to this video this far. This is a lot of stuff, and it's really irritating. But I guess I want you to be irritated because I want you to understand exactly how these people are wrong and what they're doing. And hopefully I've given you some clarity, and I've helped you to think through these issues in a way that's more scriptural and just better. You don't need to hear what these false prophets have to say. You already have the true and complete and trustworthy Word of God. This has been an incredible four years. Uh, we've accomplished so much together. I want to thank all of my family and my friends and my staff and so many other people for being here. I want to this day has seen the inauguration of Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. as the 46th President of the United States. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. Joe Biden didn't win. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. He's not the president. The office of president of the United States. Office of president of the United States. He will never be the president. And will, to the best of my ability, will, to the best of my ability. And come January the 20th, I'm telling you I'll be. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. Bing, 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 bing. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you, God. So help me, God. Referring back to this video. Congratulations, Mr. President. <laughs> Lost. And especially for tomorrow, remember 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Elijah's Dreams and 8 p.m. tomorrow night, I'll be with the big guys on Flashpoint. It will be exciting and I promise you, God has a lot to say about everything. So if you're tired of waiting to find out what's going on, let him tell you. If you actually believe that listening to this lady is listening to the voice of God himself, there's nothing I can say or probably anybody can say to help you. He has no problem speaking. I think some people have a really hard time hearing because they get distracted, they get in fear, they're too busy arguing or hating people or waiting for the date to happen that they've all been pointing at. 
So she doesn't want you to look at the fact that her prophecy is proven false on this date. So you really shouldn't look at any date, I guess. God isn't pointing at a date. He's pointing at an event. And it will happen. And as long as this event is always ambiguous and never given an actual time frame, she will never be held accountable when it doesn't happen. By the way, you need to meet my other friend. Yes, right here is a member of Heaven's Army, and he has my back. I wonder who has yours. You hear heavy breathing or loud steps in the middle of the night. He may be checking out somebody right now in Washington, D.C. I hope you have a good night's sleep. And remember, always celebrate what God is doing, even when you don't understand it. And yes, he shares things with the prophets, but sometimes... We aren't allowed to tell you all of it. And neither is any covert activity that's going on are you allowed to know about. Unless you're part of it. Looking forward to spending a lot of time with everybody. And don't worry, not going anywhere. Not unless God takes me right through the wall of your house. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? I will see you later. Make sure you got your popcorn ready, okay? If I can keep this long enough to eat it and Jen doesn't get it. Yeah. Basta! <laughs>